Okay, everyone, we are ready. Miss Milian is about to tell us which ingredients that we will need, and she's gonna give us some information about the ingredients. So here is Miss Milian. All right, guys, picadillo, traditional Cuban style picadillo, is very easy to make, and you don't need a lot of ingredients. Most of these things are things that you probably already have in your pantry or in your kitchen. So the first thing we're gonna start with is the veggies. You definitely need onion. I like to use a sweet yellow onion, but you can use a white onion as well. Just stay away from the purple. It just aesthetically doesn't look as nice in picadillo. You also need some green pepper. This is green pepper here, and it also has about six or seven garlic cloves. Now, the reason why it looks a little mushy like this is because picadillo is very smooth ground beef. And so it doesn't really taste as well with chunks of vegetables in it. So we like to process it in a food processor. And I used this one right here. Um, some of you might have a ninja, a bullet, um, any type of blender. You can use any of those things to kind of puree your veggies for a picadillo. It makes for a smoother consistency, a more liquidy sauce, and it, overall it's just a lot um, nicer looking and easier to eat. The last veggie that we have here is potatoes, and these are some diced white potatoes. Um, obviously, we're going to kind of reduce the amount of potatoes that we add to this dish just to kind of stay away from um, the amount of starch we're adding, but Ms. Myers will tell you a little bit more about that um, coming up. And then we have capers, Spanish olives, and raisins. Now, in Cuban style picadillo, some people really like the sweetness of adding uh, black raisins at the end. Um, some people just don't like to mix the sweet and the savory. So it's up to you if that's a taste that you like and you like mixing sweet and savory uh, flavors together, then definitely add some raisins to your picadillo. If not, those are optional and you can just leave those out. Um, we also have some tomato sauce. Now the tomato sauce I like to use for picadillo is the one that's Spanish style. It's called Spanish style tomato sauce. Goya has it. There's a lot of different brands that will sell you Spanish style. The reason why it's Spanish style is because it doesn't have parsley or oregano, so it doesn't taste Italian. That's very, very important. If you use regular Italian style, like that has basil or parsley, you're gonna get a completely different flavor to your picadillo, and it's not gonna really taste traditionally Cuban. Where do they find this one? Is it in the regular grocery store? Regular grocery store, regular aisle where you can find the Hunt's tomato sauce. Right mm -hmm. next to it, you'll find um, different brands that sell Spanish style tomato sauce. Okay. And then we have some basic white cooking wine. Um, this is very um, essential for the picadillo recipe because it's going to kind of water down the sauce and it's going to give it a real rich flavor to it and add to the ground beef that we're making. And olive oil, obviously, to help us kind of cook down some of our veggies. And now let's go to the seasonings, Ms. Myers. Now, this is very basic. To make Cuban style picadillo, you definitely need some salt and pepper. Regular salt and pepper is fine. And you need a, a spice called ground cumin. Now, cumin is something that has a very nutty taste. Um, it, it is an Indian spice. Um, so the Caribbean is very popular in Caribbean dishes, and it does leave like a very nutty, very rich um, taste to the food. It's used in meat dishes, um, all kinds of proteins, and stews and soup use cumin. Um, you also add it to beans and any type of, you know, uh, stews that you make with beans in them as well. And the last um, seasoning I like to use is adobo. Um, I use this instead of uh, complete. Um, you know, a lot of people like to use complete seasoning for their meats and for their dishes. The problem with complete is that it has MSG. And MSG is used as a meat tenderizer. So complete is fine when you're gonna season some ribs or some chickens, maybe something you're gonna throw on the barbecue. But for purposes of making a, a saucy ground beef, you really don't need to have meat tenderizer. And it's not really good for you. So the more you can eliminate um, MSG from your diet, the better. So the adobo seasoning, this basically just has um, ground garlic, onion powder, and it also has something called turmeric. Now, turmeric gives color to the food, and that's very important. It makes it look aesthetic, it makes it look nice, and it also has a very nice flavor and smells just delicious. So I like to use this one um, instead of complete. Again, it tastes better, and it's also better for you. 
turmeric. Turmeric is also uh, great for um, arthritis. Yes, it yes. has tons of properties, yes. medical properties that that um, can be used when you make teas and you can drink it in a tea. And they even sell it in capsules. So it's it's overall a, a, a nice spice to use, and it's a bonus because it tastes really good too. Okay. All right. So let's begin uh, putting things together. All right. All right, guys, so step one to making Cuban style picadillo is to actually cook and saute your veggies. So we're gonna start with the onions. Remember the onions that we um, process through the food processor. And so we're gonna put them in a little bit of oil at the bottom of the pan, just kind of allows them to cook. You should hear that sizzle that tells you that your oil is hot enough. And we're just gonna put these onions here. And then we're gonna get the mixture of the green pepper and garlic that we also uh, processed in the food processor. I'm gonna put that in there as well. And you're just gonna kind of saute these. Your heat should be on high to medium. And there's no rush here. You're just waiting for it to get hot enough to saute and your onions will kind of turn transparent. That's when you know this is ready. It'll bubble up and your onions will get a little bit clear. They won't be as white as they are when you put them in initially. Okay, and after they turn clear, our next step? After they turn clear that you see your veggies are bubbled and they're ready to go and it smells really good, the next step is to add the raw ground beef. That's the next step. Okay, we'll see you when the onions are transparent. Okay, see you then. So you're smashing the meat and all the flavors are going to melt into the, the meat and it's all going to cook down and be yummy and delicious together. Absolutely. Okay, so now we're ready for some sweet elements. and Okay, so now that we have... Um, a good amount of liquid in here um, and we have all of our ingredients now we are going to taste our picadillo just to see if we have enough salt if we have enough seasoning if we're missing anything or we want to add a little bit of extra of any of these things that we have here before we sweeten it up a little bit and again if you don't like mixing your savory and your sweet then you may want to skip the step of the raisins that gives it a little sweetness but at this point, you want to taste the meat and you want to see what's missing before you go ahead and adjust the sweetness. So I'm tasting the cooking wine and I'm tasting the, um, the saltiness. Does definitely doesn't need any more salt. The tomato sauce balance is perfect, but it is missing a little bit of adobo. Okay. So I want to go ahead and add a little bit more of adobo. Again, some families like to use complete seasoning. If you are used to using that and that's something that your family uses often, then you can substitute adobo for complete. Okay, so you see the consistency. It should look kind of like manwich. That's what it looks like to me. It does, <laughs> yep. It's kind of saucy ground beef. But again, these potatoes are not cooked all the way, so we wanna make sure we tuck them down at the bottom where the liquid is, because this is gonna simmer for several minutes, and they're gonna con it's gonna continue to cook, um, combining all the ingredients and kind of uh, soaking into the small potatoes. So at this point, I'm gonna add some raisins. And so these are regular, just California raisins. Does it matter if they're dark or if they're the lighter, the golden ones? The golden ones are fine. Um, you know, they, they, they still bring the sweetness, which is what, what we're looking for. And you don't want to add too much because this is not, you know, raisin bread. Okay. This is a meat dish. So it's just enough to kind of cut the, um, the bitterness of the tomato sauce and just kind of bring a little sweetness to the, to the dish. So it hits all the different areas of the palate. So you yes. have sweet, you have savory, you have a little salty, you yep. have, yeah. And it also, besides the different tastes of the palate, it also has different consistencies and textures because you have 
the diced potatoes that are firm but not hard. You have the olives, you have the capers. Um, the meat obviously is, is mushy because we mashed the ground beef down to very mm -hmm. small pieces. So you don't want to eat a big bowl of mush with rice. Sure. You want to have a picadillo that is balanced and brings you different flavors and different textures as well. So now at this point, we're just gonna cover it and we're gonna make sure, like I said, that all those potatoes are down in the sauce. Don't forget to tuck your potatoes. Tuck those potatoes tuck down. Potatoes. Yep. And we're gonna make sure it's covered and we're going to simmer it on medium high. And that's gonna simmer for about 15 minutes before we're ready to serve it on top of some rice. And we'll be back to show you. Okay, on to the cauliflower rice. Now, how I like to do my cauliflower rice, there's many ways to do it. You can follow the instructions where you steam it in the microwave, that is perfectly fine, but I like to do mine in a skillet, especially if I have time. So, what I would normally do is add some olive oil to the skillet, like that, and then I like to put uh, onions and garlic, put a little bit of that in with it also, which you'll see me doing in just a second. Wait for it. Wait for it. There it is. Okay. Onions and garlic. Just a little bit of that type of thing in with it. And let those saute a little bit. Let the onion become uh, clear. Okay. Now, after the onion is clear, uh, simply because this one was for a Cuban-style uh, picadillo, I decided to put in a few capers, but normally I would not put capers. But for this particular day, I decided to put some capers. They are optional for your cauliflower rice. And I move it around a little bit more in the skillet. Let those, you know, let all the flavors commingle. Then at this point, I'm going to add my um, frozen cauliflower rice. Now you can do it frozen, you can do it fresh, you can uh, let it thaw out a little bit. Mine was frozen, so I put it in there and you know, it still works, however. So I put two bags, you only have to do one for your project. I did two because I had a lot of people obviously to cook for. So you're gonna see me chopping it apart a little bit with my spatula and you know you mix it around you stir everything the capers the onions the garlic the cauliflower rice you put it all together until it's done the cauliflower will be soft and it'll have the same consistency as rice when it's done that's how you know it's done when the cauliflower is complete and it is cooked you can add some salt whatever seasoning that you want to add to it when it's complete, then you mix it with your traditional white rice. You put them together in a big pot. You don't cook them all together because the cauliflower rice is going to take a little bit longer to cook than the traditional white rice. But remember, we're only using half the white rice we normally would use. Okay. Once the cauliflower is cooked, then you mix it in, you stir it all in together, and you won't know the difference. I promise you. And your uh, body will thank you. And uh, uh, your simple carbohydrate count will be so much less. Now, students, this is a great time to explain to your family all the things we've been learning in class about carbohydrates and how your body sees them, how your body breaks them down, and why this is important to people who are diabetic, pre-diabetic, are people who are just trying to lose weight, okay? Have a conversation, y'all.